Hey guys, welcome back to Steps and Stones. I was gonna call you the fellow cult of the celluloid, but I don't know what I'm doing. Things are a bit different this episode, as you can tell. I don't normally like to speak to camera like this one-on-one -on -one because first off, it's just a little taxing on my voice. And two, because no one honestly comes here for the face, but I tricked you today. But I'll get through it somehow because today is actually a different episode than anything I've actually created so far on this channel. And I wanted to make something that was both fun for me and maybe educational for you to celebrate and say thank you for a thousand subscribers, which is still pretty insane to me. Back when I first started this channel, this was just kind of like a secret place that I would upload travel and photo adventures. But back in February of this year, for some reason or another, I started posting again, and the channel kind of took on a life of its own. And it kind of perfectly documents the moment that I fell back in love with photography and, more importantly, film. I've worked in the film and video world for over a decade now at this point, and when I got back into shooting film, it offered a form of expression and escape that was kind of just for me. And I'd like to think that's every video I've made here so far on this channel. Something just for me. The fact that a thousand of you seem to enjoy it is just the cherry on top. So when I was thinking about doing a thank you video, I just wanted to make something that was on my terms. Because the reason I love this channel is when I make something, I... I do it for myself, but I still try to hold myself accountable and stay consistent. It's a challenge that seems to be paralleling my photography and opening up my craft. And sure, maybe you just like to live vicariously through my poor financial decisions, but the fact that all of you are here at all makes it kind of worth it. So if you'll indulge me, let's make another bad decision real quick. Expired film. I've been kicking around the idea for some time of having a somewhat annual expired episode every once in a while, so we could explore different things that may not entirely work, but might be educational to try. And how that becomes an annual excuse, I don't really know yet. But if you like this idea of shooting expired film, maybe leave a comment and let's discuss how we can make this a series. And if not, then at least we did this first one to celebrate. Because the first expired role I'll be shooting is this Kodak Gold 100 from 1992. The story behind this role is about a year ago, we were going through a closet at my mom's and stumbled on her old Nikon bag. We found her Nikon F that had a few different interchangeable prisms, an old slide projector, and this roll of film from 1992. I can't say wholeheartedly that this Kodak Gold was all stored correctly in the slightest, but we had a good laugh over it and she was kind enough to gift it to me for this moment, which is kind of poetic since she got me back into shooting film in the first place. And we just wanted to see if we can still get anything on the frame. There's only 24 exposures to this role, so I really hope I don't fall in love too badly with how it looks. First of all, the packaging on this thing is incredible. Look at those peak 90s color palettes that just scream, shoot me daddy. And the best part of the box was the old school advertisement from an older point and shoot style disposable camera of the time. So you know I went on the dark web and picked one up for myself. And it was really cheap, honestly. Unlike the Kodak Gold, I have no idea where or how this thing was stored, and maybe I just keep it around for decorations and laughs, but if you think I should try shooting this, maybe you'll convince me. When loading this thing, I was very careful with the packaging, because obviously I'm keeping this tiny box forever. There is this universal rule when it comes to shooting expired film, that you should lower the film's ISO number by one stop every decade expired. And this being over 30 years expired now, that's pretty low. But this rule is usually more directed at higher ISO films, more sensitive ones. The fact that this gold is only 100 speed, I think we have a little leeway. Is it gonna be nasty? Have crazy color shifts and grain? F yeah. But that's kind of the fun shooting expired film. So maybe don't take this thing to your cousin's baby shower if you're in charge of pictures. For this experiment, I wanted to shoot with my Rebel 2000 because it doesn't get used enough for being quite the little workhorse that it is, and it can easily lie to your film's DX coding, switching the ISO to something that it's not, and it can go really low. You can do this with most manual cameras, but this was a solid excuse to use the absolute beast that is my 16 to 35 millimeter. This kind of sharpness paired with such nasty old film kind of excited me. Plus the best part was this was gonna be my 69th roll that I've shot all year. And that's kind of nothing crazy since 2023 is almost up. But for a guy that started in February by making a video called, this is why you should quit film, it's kind of a lot of film. But let's have me shut up and we'll get to the shots. We got an exposure. 
The first image is great, but a little flat for my taste. And I don't mean the colors, because obviously those are shifted and muted. But if this hadn't been such a secluded entry, just like no way around that fence, and this was the only vantage point, I'd like to get a different angle, slightly ajar, going between the two cars, drawing into the brush and carrying your eye line. This is just a classic viewpoint of downtown. And I almost loved all the shots with tall buildings in this role, as I think the expired nature of the gold really lent themselves to the timeless feeling of the architecture. While taking those first two shots, an older gentleman asked me about the camera and what I was hoping to capture that day. He was nice enough to allow me to grab this portrait, and damn, does he look hard in this photo. The chair, the blue wall, his shoes, the gold watch peeking out under the cuff of his sweater, it feels timeless and elegant. Really wish I could have captured this moment on a newer roll of film, but I'm happy for this interaction and the friendly conversation we had. Don't even start. I know, you're jealous how great this shot is. Never in the history of homeless toilets have you ever witnessed such glory. The throne of a different color, as you can tell. I went very wide on this shot and utilized the 16mm. And I think the distortion really creates a story behind the roadside treasures and the unwelcoming skies overhead. On my walk, I was drawn to the pop of these red tires. The contrast of this almost rotting car and the pristine looking wheels was a fun balance that I wanted to capture. But this is the shot I really like. Sure, you lose a bit of the reds, but we really can't see those due to the expired nature of the Kodak Gold anyway. But the reflection of the sky in the window and the addition of the older ambulance in the background gives so much needed depth, and I like this photo a lot. As you know, the sun goes down basically around noon during wintertime, so the next day, I got up around sunrise to finish off this roll. I like this shot fine, I guess. The 16mm is definitely doing its thing, but I believe my rushed exposure predictions are the results of this final look. Yes, this is expired film, but I was hoping to capture a bit more of the shadow detail as this worker crossed into the frame. I like this shot a lot. It's a bit wide when you look back on it, but I really enjoy the framing when it comes to the tip of the structure sliding into the puzzle piece of the tree line. This is one of those moments where the 16mm shines. Even though it's a little jarring, it's kind of cool the way the aspect is really distorted. This one just rocks. The morning glow in the buildings and a bit better predictions with my exposure allowed the shadow detail to almost be acceptable here. Well, it worked, kind of. This was obviously a gamble, but shooting film is a gamble in itself. It always is. You never really know when things are gonna go wrong, so why not lean into that mindset and shoot for the risk of failure, but result in having a lot of fun. I really hope you guys enjoyed this somewhat different episode, and I really thank you for all the support over this last year. It would be fun to do another one of these in the future, because God knows if I find it somewhere, I'll buy it. <laughs>